Should you invest or pay off debt? It's a question I hear regularly. And it's a question I know you're asking as well. Everyone's financial situation is a little different, so there really isn't a one-size-fits-all answer to this question. But in this video, we're going to talk about, and I'll talk you through, my thoughts on paying off debt versus investing as a general guide and give you some ideas on how you might approach it. So stick with me and stay tuned. Hi, Andrew Woodward here, founder of The Investor's Way and certified mindshift.money coach. To help explain the decision of whether you should be paying off debt or investing, let's meet Ben and Claire. Ben and Claire are both married and in their early 30s, and after reading a bunch of great books about investing in the past few months, they're excited to get started as soon as possible. They too are asking the question, should we invest or pay off debt first? So here's a snapshot of their current household debt situation. They've got mortgage repayments of $2,300 a month at 4% interest. They've got car loan repayments of $900 per month at 5% interest. Credit card number one, $7,000 owing, 19% interest. Credit card number two, $800 owing, 12% interest. Ben and Claire meet all their required or minimum debt repayments comfortably, but own, often only pay the minimum off the credit cards. They have around $800 to $1,000 per month of spare income they can either invest or put towards paying off debt. So what are the factors to consider? Factor number one, the type of debt and amount of interest you're paying. The types of debt with the highest interest rates are usually shiny pieces of plastic. They're the credit cards. Credit card interest rates can range anywhere from 10 to 20% per annum. These types of rates are serious wealth killers and you'll want to focus on getting rid of them as quickly as you can. I'd recommend Ben and Claire focus on paying off their two credit cards as quickly as possible before investing. Investing returns are historically less than the interest Ben and Claire are paying on these cards. If they were to invest while still getting hit with high credit interest, any returns earned on their investments would be cancelled out by the amount of interest they're paying on the cards. So in a nutshell, their debt is costing them more than they'd earn in interest from their investments. Now, if you have debt with an interest rate of more than 10%, my advice would be to focus paying it off as soon as possible before investing. So let's have a look at Ben and Claire's credit card repayment strategy. In Ben and Claire's case, I'd recommend clearing the smaller amount first, credit card number two, while still making minimum or above minimum payments on credit card number one. Then move on to paying off credit card number one. This debt repayment approach has been coined the snowball effect. It's become a popular strategy for tackling multiple debts while working from the smallest to the largest, rather than focusing on the interest rate. Now, there is a science behind the reason for this strategy, which we don't need to get into. Just understand that the mindset benefits of eliminating debts has a positive impact on your ability to continue with the larger debts. Once those cards with killer interest rates are knocked out, Ben and Claire could choose to split the $800 to $1,000 they were paying towards card between investing and making extra payments on the car loan to pay it off faster. Or they might stick with the usual monthly car payment and put the $800 to $1,000 towards investing. There's no one right answer for each individual situation, but a reasonable conservative guide to use is this. If a debt has an interest rate of more than 5%, focus on paying it off. Less than 5%, you could stick with the usual repayments and put your extra cash towards investing instead. This rule is flexible and based on what is happening with financial markets at the time, but for now, it's a good guide. So factor number two, it's not all about mathematics. Money is an emotional stuff. Our financial lives are driven by habits and our attitudes about money. Just because we've got all the numbers worked out on paper doesn't mean we follow through on what we need to do, which is why I don't believe in budgets. Getting into the habit of investing, even while you're working to pay off debt, can be a good thing. The focus is on building a regular investment habit rather than getting caught up in the amount of money invested. So Ben and Claire could choose to put just $100 aside each month for investing while they focus on paying off their high interest debts. 
they open a simple micro-investing account to do this. Sure, $100 a month isn't going to transform their financial world anytime soon, but the amount isn't the important thing. Forming the habit is. If Ben and Claire take nine months to pay off their high interest credit cards, along the way, they've gotten into the habit of investing too. And once their high interest credit cards are cleared, they can begin to channel a big chunk of the money they were paying towards cards to investing. They can move from their micro-investing account and open a brokerage account, invest in ETFs, or consider individual stock investments as well. The good news is, whether you're focused on paying off your debts as quickly as possible, or investing your money, both are steps towards securing your financial future. And that's what it's all about in the long run, right? Okay, if you wanna learn your money health score, click the link below to take my money health score quiz. Once you learn your score, you get a special report describing your result, what it all means, and access to some free videos to help you improve your score and your money outcomes. So click the link and let's build your wealth from today. I'll see you next week for another money tip.